What would the Antonov AN-225 be like if it was a passenger plane? As in, we take the existing aircraft, slap in some seats, and start flying revenue flights. How many passengers could it fly, and would it be a good experience? Let's get our hands dirty and get to work. Thanks for tuning in today. If this is the second or third video of mine that you're watching, then perhaps it's time to subscribe. The red button right there. Unlike a plane ticket, this is free and you can cancel at any time. The Antonov AN-225 is the world's most powerful cargo plane. Well, one that can carry cargo inside of the aircraft fuselage and is a feat of pure, incredible engineering. It was originally designed to carry the Soviet equivalent of the space shuttle. However, when that space program was shut down, all that remained was the plane. Its features include the incredible carrying capacity of around 200 tons, more than any other aircraft, powered by six engines that make the Boeing 747 look like a small regional jet. Only two aircraft were ever actually built, and only single one ever entered continuous active service. The other fuselage lies incomplete, and there is little justification to get it back into $350 million operational condition. Until now. That's right, found and explained fans, we have magically secured this second airframe, and today we're going to turn it into a passenger aircraft. Let's see what we're working with. The AN-225 has a length of 84 meters or 275 feet. However, the cabin doesn't go the full length of the plane, and instead the cabin only actually reaches 43 meters or 142 feet. This is very similar to the Airbus A380 that has a cabin length of 49.9 meters. In terms of width, the cabin is 6.4 meters wide, 21 feet, and is 4.4 meters tall, which is 14 feet, which should be enough to have a second deck, although the ceiling would be 20 centimeters lower than the Airbus A380. You can start to see that the internal space of the AN-225 is around the same width of the Airbus A380, but not as long, totaling around 46,000 cubic feet, or 1,300 square cubed. Wait, wait that, that's not a thing? I, I mean meters cubed. Boy, that would have been a stupid mistake to have in a video, wouldn't it? Moving on from that inside joke, we can now start to plan out how many seats we would fit inside the AN-225. Starting with the economy cabin, we know that the average economy seat is 18 inches wide and 31 inches deep in pitch. If the cabin is 21 feet wide or 252 inches wide in total, then we can fit in 14 seats across. But we know with the A380, with the same cabin width, they can only fit a maximum of 11 seats across due to the aisles and other features. As this plane has relatively the same width, we will assume the same restrictions with a configuration of 3-5-3. Applying this configuration to the length of the cabin, we can figure out how many passengers we can fit on the lower deck. At 31 inches of seat pitch, and the cabin itself measuring 1,704 inches long, that's around 55 rows. But of course, we need doors, stairs, bathrooms, and more, pushing it down to around an arbitrary number of 45 rows. For comparison's sake, the Airbus A380 fits 40 rows of economy, plus a first-class cabin on the lower deck. This gives us a total economy capacity on the AN-225 of around 495 passengers on the lower deck. Cozy. Now, let's have a look at that upper deck. As the plane actually curves inwards as it gets towards the ceiling, there is not enough room for the same width of seats, reducing our cabin to around 9 seats across in a 3-3-3 configuration. Assuming the same length and rows, this would be an additional 405 passengers along the length of the cabin, for a total of 900 passengers on board in all economy. Crammed in there just like sardines. But let's add in some business class passengers so we actually have some higher paying customers on board. 
An impressive business class seat of 80 inches deep and 20 inches wide would set us back to a row configuration of 2-2-2. At 80 inches deep and the same length of the cabin, that's 21 rows of seats. Taking into account other items like bathrooms, a bar and more, this takes us down to around 14 arbitrary or so rows, for a total of 84 business class passengers. Combine that together, we have around about 490 passengers of economy and business, just under around 500 on board. This does seem awfully dense. If we were to take the same passenger to cubic meter ratio as the Airbus A380, we would end up with an answer of 255 passengers on the lower deck and a further 189 on the upper deck. This gives a total of 444 passengers across a three-class configuration, which is pretty close to the answer that we have above. There is also some more room on the nose section that is normally empty as the AN225 opens it up as a door so we could fit in a few more passengers. But does this plane actually have the range when it's fully loaded with passengers? Range will be the deciding factor if we can operate this plane as a commercial aircraft. The AN225 has an empty range of 15,400 kilometers or 8,300 nautical miles with its maximum fuel. But if the plane is fully loaded with 200 tons of payload, its range actually falls down to 4,000 kilometers or 2,150 nautical miles. As we know that the distance between two popular destinations, such as London to New York, is 5,500 kilometers or 3,000 nautical miles, or the distance between London and Dubai is 5,400 kilometers or 2,900 nautical miles, this plane will need to have a range of at least three to 4,000 nautical miles to be practical, with a carrying capacity of at least 100 tons. If the average passenger weighs 75 kilograms or 85 kilograms if you're American, then we will have a total weight of 41,000 kilograms for 490 passengers. If we add in 20 kilos of luggage per passenger, we get a total of 9,000 kilograms, bringing us up to a nice solid 50 tons. With the remaining 50 tons left over, we will have to fit out the passenger cabin on board. This would go to seats, interior, decking, entertainment systems, food, and more. We might be able to get even more out of this plane fuselage if we replace its current six engines with the latest GE9X engines from the Boeing 777X, making it insanely more efficient. Confidently, we can suggest that this plane can now perform the route we outlined above but there are a few more issues. You might have noticed that something else is missing from my earlier cross sections. Where does the baggage go? These designs don't accommodate any luggage at all. There is no cargo deck and no room to place any items outside of the cabin. So we would need to either turn the plane into a combi and have less room inside or allow passengers to have suitcases in their laps. Also, we need to mention that the cargo cabin of this plane is utterly decompressed during flight, so not only will the passengers be freezing cold, but they'll also struggle to breathe. Which means we can either increase the weight of additional pressurization equipment and potentially have to make changes to the fuselage, or we could charge passengers extra for oxygen and heat. I have a feeling I know which airline will choose the latter. Plus, there are no windows. Passengers might be okay to sit in the dark, or they'll need some sort of big TV screen to show where they're flying. Although, maybe we could just fly low and open the nose door and let the breeze come in. Lastly, this plane as a commercial carrier is essentially a total over design. The AN-225 has a stronger structure to carry heavy items like a tank or a space shuttle. Passengers are far lighter and spread over a bigger area and thus have a totally different way out layout entirely. There is an argument that the lower deck of our design could just be made for cargo and an upper deck for passengers, but we would have seen that same conversion on the A380 before we saw this happen to the AN225. You don't need so much power to fly this longer distance and you can start to see how the A380 is so much more efficient for passenger travel than this plane. And that more engines doesn't equal a better transport option, making concepts like this triple decker plane wholly impractical. 
But this plane would be a heck of a ride. And I think if you're the only commercial carrier in the world with the AN-225, you would sell out every flight simply because of all the plane geeks willing to pay to fly on an ex-Soviet space shuttle carrier. What do you think? Would you want to fly on board this plane? Let me know down in the comments. And thank you again so much for watching.